Hey, what's going on, guys? Kalamanzi here. The race world first is over. The hurricane is gone. Didn't even lose power, which is great. Uh, I am back trying to get some content out for you guys on Warlock because patch 11.0.5 is coming out in about two weeks. Uh, chat told me the 22nd. Uh, if they're lying to me, well, I'm lying to you. But either way, uh, I think it's coming out soon. <laughs> now, I want to hit on... I got a lot of questions over the last couple weeks uh, about, like... Destro, Demon, and Aph. Why are they seeing more play? Or why is Destro and Aph seeing more play over Demonology even in single target when Demon's ahead by 100k, 70k, 80k, and Demon's getting more buffs? It's already number one. Why is he getting buffed more? Why are Aph and Destro not? I don't know why they didn't buff Aph and Destro. But uh, <laughs> either way, uh, we're going to break down all three specs today, talk about damage profiles, some feedback on them, why Demon's being, why Demo's clunky. Uh, in general, uh, even though it, I, I think Blizzard has made really fun thematic Warlock specs, but the clunkiness of some things is still there. So I want to break it all down today. This video is going to be uh, a basically like combat breakdown and also feedback video. It's too long. This is this is like going to be uh, Sims review, cha upcoming changes, breakdown with logs and some combat looking at each spec here. Feedback video in a few days. Um, but yeah. We're gonna do that here. Uh, also, the website kalamazi.gg is up to date for most recent talent builds. If you guys want, uh, put a video out. If you guys go on that, already changed a couple more things or changed a couple things on the site. So, if you want it, uh, link up here, as well as we course add ons on Twitch and Discord. Also, links down below. It's up here as well, somewhere if you want them. Uh, and yeah, let's get it going. All right, so getting into the warlock changes briefly coming in 11.0.5. We're gonna look at these, look at some sims, some logs briefly, and then get into like the feedback points. I'm gonna try to do a lot in a short video here because, well, we'll have to hit on. Uh, so, Soul Rot, new icon, very cool, haven't seen it. Hopefully it's cool. Uh, Diabolist, the cycle of Diabolic Ritual is now reset. When entering an arena, battleground, raid encounter, or starting an M plus dungeon. This has been an issue since like alpha and beta. It was reported a bit there. It's good they're looking at it. It's good to see this change. You can basically, uh, like pull the boss, reset, queue different pets up to sort of like uh, game, I wouldn't say exploit, but like game what pet you start with. At times, I'm sure people have noticed it in progression where at times you'll start a fight with a Mother of Chaos being your first summon, times a Pit Lord, other times an Overfiend. Uh, the ritual cycle of pets, which is static, it always goes pet one, pet two, pet three. I think the first one's Overlord into Mother of Chaos and the Pit Lord doesn't reset when you die, start an M plus dungeon or whatever. So like, let's say you summoned, I think number two is a mother of chaos. Uh, most recently, if you leave combat or whatever and enter combat again, say you wipe on a boss and run back. The first summon should be the overlord, which is number one, but it's actually number three. It's the pit Lord. It was, it's an issue. It was never fixed during beta. It's getting fixed in 11.0.5. Cool. Good to see, uh, needs to be fixed. So that's nice. Uh, overlord's got a range attack now. If his pathing is messed up, uh, fight like Roshanon, good example here. He'll just spawn in and go away at times because he can't do anything. He can't boss, boss off the platform. That's a good change there as well. The change to destruction and diabolic ritual. So uh, it's been updated. Chaos Bolt, Rain of Fire, Shadow Burn, Grant Ritual for 20 seconds. If diabolic ritual is already active, its duration is deuced by one second whenever you cast Chaos Bolt. Rain of Fire and Shadow Burn. The one in game currently reads similar, but different. Uh, spending a soul shard on a damaging spell grants Diabolic Ritual for 20 seconds. When Diabolic Ritual is active, each soul shard spent on a damaging spell reduces its duration by one second. So Rain of Fire would be two if you were playing Inferno or three without it. Um, Chaos Bolt would be two, Shadow Burn would be one. Um, they're changing that to just be a flat one second, regardless of the spell cast. Um, sort of how like the weird nether portal thing was uh, not the same, still a little funky. Um, and this is being done in an attempt to combat ritual or rain of fire being our spender in a single target, which has not been a thing for a while. This is like a very odd late change to be coming at this point. Um, they've also updated, they've updated Touch of Rancora though, uh, to do the same thing, uh, increase the damage of Chaos Bolt, Rain of Fire, Shadow Burn by 100% and reduce the cast time by 50%. Chaos Bolt reduces the duration of Diabolic Ritual by one additional second. So essentially Chaos Bolt in the current retail right now is uh, two seconds from Ritual. Uh, Shadow Burn, one, because it's one shard. And Rain of Fire uh, is... Uh, three or two, whatever it is, right? Um, now, they're making this change to encourage Chaos Bolt being your spender in single target, along, you know, alongside Shadowburn, you know, I would assume as well. Um, Shadowburn also just, you know, passively giving you one second reduction regardless, based on, you know, how it functions currently in retail. But um, 
It's an odd change to make uh, in, in a sense. We're adjusting Diabolic Ritual to avoid a situation where constantly casting a of Fire due to its instant cast time provides the best output for Diabolist. But this is an issue that was happened during beta and was resolved about three months ago. Uh, to avoid adding to Diabolic Ritual's already lengthy tooltip, we're adding functionality to Touch of Brain Core up to add further value to casting Chaos Bolt. So they're further adding value to like the Chaos Bolt Spender like reward for Diabolist. Um, that that does make sense but it it seems odd to make that change because it's going to make pet cycling a lot worse with rain of fire and aoe which is like one of the strengths i would say of diabolist i mean rain of fire is going to be one second off ritual that seems terrible uh and this was already addressed like three months ago um with the changes they made to a bunch of different abilities making you know Chaos Bolt, your spender again. So, I mean, this has been a change for a couple months now, like a month at this point on PTR. I just got around, got home lot stuff. Uh, I think this should be reverted, honestly. I don't I don't think this is necessary. Uh, it, it's gonna make like Ritual Cycle much, much longer. Uh, you won't get near as many in AOE when you're M plus casting Rain of Fires and stuff. And Rain of Fire already sort of sucks. It might just make it so you're casting even less random fires and it's gonna be really awkward. I don't think it's a good change overall. I think it should go back to where it is currently on retail. Just make it per shard spent. Uh, the random fire thing was fixed. So hopefully that'll get fixed. Um, by the way, want to point that out. Uh, so I guess very briefly getting into like logs here. I want to get into feedback on talent trees too. I'm trying to make it all one video here. Um, obviously this is mythic stuff. Warlock has been, Warlock has not been the strongest class this raid. Obviously, Frost DK, Enhanced Shaman, Ellie Shaman Mage, Hunter doing better recently, all kind of stuff, Warrior being very good. There are always classes that are better and worse. Tuning is never 100% across the board, optimized or, you know, equal. That's that. Locke is doing well on Silken Court. This is Mythic. Going into Heroic is a similar sort, uh, I believe, on Silken Court as well. Um, but Locke's, Locke's an interesting spot this tier, because if you look at Warcraft logs and things, which is not the great or the best uh, way to look at what class is doing well and poorly in a sense, um, you would look probably venture to get, or probably come to come to the conclusion that Locke is not doing the bestest here. If you pull up Simcraft, uh, you'd also probably figure that Locke is not doing that well this tier. We have Diabolus Demonology being our highest simming spec. It might even be an old sim. I think the new sim is like 1.43 give or take with the buffs that came in a few days ago, roughly. Affliction being 1.375 and Destruction being uh, 1.34, I believe. Uh, so 1.36. So uh, Diabolist, Soul Harvester, and Diabolist. Uh, out of all the classes here, we are definitely like looking at all of our specs combined, being a pure DPS class, the lowest by a long shot. Now, I will say that Warlock's damage profiles do fit a lot of bosses pretty well this tier. I mean, looking at Mythic, I mean, I'll going to show all the classes here but like um, looking at mythic for example olgrax stat cleave fight demonology can do pretty well in this fight you've got you know single target damage uh demo is our highest sim in spec and single target you've also got stat cleave in the intermission a solid profile for demonology a solid profile for um even like destruction if you're playing diabolus right diabolus brings this unique uh play style where you can queue up a pet queue up a ruination meteor queue up a pit lord queue up an overlord queue up big mommy uh for aoe then pop a shadow burn and blast with those pets so like raw sims are not always the greatest example of like what is actually the best end all be all right um but it's worth taking it into account damage profiles also matter uh bloodbound horror not like a Great Warlock fight, but not terrible. It's fine. Destro brings decent, dam decent cleave damage. Aph can cleave here a bit too. Good Shadowburn cleave. Sick run, an odd fight. Not really a whole lot going on here when it comes to like uh, lock single target stuff. Um, I mean, honestly, like locking single target, not really looking the best here. Uh, a lot of shamans, mages, hunters, uh, warriors, so on and so forth, right? I mean, the highest uh, 1.54. I'm trying to see where lock is even at. Let's see here. Um, a lot of Destro. A lot of aff and the interesting thing here talking about damage profiles is that just because i mean looking at these sims i don't believe this sim is the most recent one with demonology it might be i think demo is 1.43 right now but regardless demonology is our highest simming spec in single target demonology has been the highest simming spec in single target for i think like a month now give or take but it is seeing very little play in single target. And a lot of that is due to the fact that it's not very mobile. Demonology has changed a lot from uh, from patch 
I mean, from Dragonflight to now, right, with the core economy being nerfed, with uh, rotational stuff changing, with a lot of talents, I think there's a very fun version of demonology there thematically, right? Uh, but the profile has changed a lot to the point where, like, yeah, it's simming our high, like the highest in single target, but its ramp is very long, it's demanding. One little micro step or mechanic goes on to you, it's scuffed, you gotta do it over again, you gotta wait for a while. Um, Destruction, on the other hand, has Shadow Burn. I mean, Shadow Burn was buffed a good bit during Alpha, during Beta, uh, to the point where Shadow Burn is very, very strong. I mean, looking at the damage breakdown here, like from the rank one parse, Shadow Burn is right there, basically. And Shadow Burn has two stacks. You can cast Shadow Burn on the move, making things, uh, making the spec more mobile, very efficient in many settings. Uh, you can just fly through a lot of stuff, right? You can just basically go in here and just slam and be able to get a lot of insane just movement out of Destro, which hasn't been a thing we've seen in a very long time, right? I mean, you've got conflict rates at two stacks, you've got shadow burn at two stacks. And like, if there's pre-planned movement coming, you can plan around casting shadow burn. It, for example, on like, on, uh, Big Mommy Spider Boss in the end, Queen Anne Shrek, right? Uh, you can plan around those pool drops. You can plan on moving into that soak by saying, okay, I'm going to cast a bolt here. I'm going to move. I'm going to shadow burn. I'm going to shadow burn. I'm going to move here. I'm going to stop. I'm going to cast and incinerate. Cool, now I've, I can conflagrate and move. I can conflagrate again and move. You can plan around that mobility, right? So there's a reason Destro, I mean, that Destro simming the lowest, right? Let's go back to my other tab here. Destro simming the lowest overall of all three specs but it's seeing the most play <laughs> in single target. Now, to clarify, AF isn't that bad either. AF sitting in a pretty solid spot, I would say overall, like as far as single target's concerned. Uh, pulling up Sikron, uh, breakdown again here, wherever it went. Um, I mean, AF is like in third, uh, it's Muffin in my guild, uh, rank nine overall, rank two. I mean, three PIs, but still like in general, it, it's it's not bad. AF is still solid in single target, but AF lacks a bit, of the, a bit of that mobility as well. Playing Soul Harvester. As Soul Harvester, you're really locked into that, you know, drain soul play style at times. And obviously, you know, you can still move a bit more than even demo in a sense, but it has this awkward play style of like, all right, well, you know, I'm sort of have concrete shoes. I can't move a whole lot or I'm going to lose damage. We've seen it time and time again, classes that have mobility. Most casters have something they can pop on the move when, when, when they're doing things. I mean, mages, mages have icy flow. Shaman has something. I forgot what, what ancestral spirits. I don't know what something like that. Shaman stuff. Uh, Evoker has Hover, which is like a weird kill Jaden's cunning. Uh, I'm sure, I mean, BM is a permanent mobile class and do whatever you want. I'm not saying bring back kill Jaden's cunning. I mean, I'd love it. They're probably not going to, but I think uh, what you're seeing here is a prime example of why damage profiles, like Sims are one thing, but damage profiles are another thing, right? Uh, moving on here from Sikron to Roshanon, this is also like what you would typically expect to be a really good demonology fight. There's a boss. I mean, demos the highest in single target. There's stat cleave. You can implode these ads. You can demonic strength them. But if you go to the warlock sort here, it's a wall of Aff and Destro again. It's a little bit of demonology here. Uh, hey, he for PI. He got three PI. So what are we getting here? Good for him. Anyways, uh, but yeah, like there's a lot going on here. Now, once again, Demonology has that Diabolus cleave, right? You can queue up a pet. You can just slam uh, like a, big, a Mother of Chaos, a, a Big Mommy, a Pit Lord, queue it up when the ad spawn, hit your Shadow Burn and launch it, right? That is a lot. But at the same time, Roshanon ads, they were removed from overall rankings here. What you're seeing on Roshanon is actually pure boss damage. And once again, Demonology is very low, even though it's the highest single target spec because of damage profiles, just the, awkward, the awkwardness of demonology in a sense. Um, there's a lot to it, right? Brood Twister, this is, one, this is a demonology fight. There's some Destro popping up in certain places. Uh, if you want more like Ag, Cleave and all that, it's a big deal. <laughs> Actually, rank one's Destro. Didn't even know. Um, a lot of demo here though, big stat cleave profile, all that stuff. It's it, it's solid, right? But I mean, it's just this is the one fight you play out of demonology on. And then moving, I mean, moving on next princess. Once again, a pure single target fight, a fight where you want a lot of survivability. You'd think, all right, let's go demonology for this. It's the best in single target. But no, it's a wall of Destro and Aff. I mean, well, really Destro. There's an Aff parse here, a couple demos here, um, but it's a lot of Destro. Once again. That shadow burn mobility that you get by having, you know, the ability to cast two shadow burns on the move, um, 
on top of the fact that you have a lot of really good fiendish cruelty value in any of these fights, whether it's single target or cleave based, uh, you're basically a spamming shadow burn for most of your shards in execute or below 30%. And on a boss like this, that's incredibly strong, incredibly powerful, right? Uh, going back, looking at Silken Court, this is a lot of AF stuff. Um, I mean, this would be an AF fight regardless, AF or Destro. Not a demo fight, spread cleave council, all that. Uh, and Queen Antrek, no mythic public logs here, but going to heroic, um, I thought Antrek would be a good demonology fight. Single target, stat cleave, all that once again. But if you pull it up here, once again, a lot of AF, a lot of Destro. There's one demo parse here. Uh, the stat cleave profile, a lot of stat cleave in this fight. Still not good enough, right? I think a bit of it's the Avalos stuff with Destro not being too strong, but being able to queue a pet up and hit that shadow burn, launch the overlord, launch some other chaos, whatever, into a pack and blast it. Demonology has Diathlos as well. I mean, you're playing it, but it's not as fast as that snap damage, like queuing, like queuing a damage up essentially, right? Um, I mean, so a lot of it comes on the damage profiles, but I think a lot of it comes down to the functionality of the specs. I mean, we looked at the single target fights, right? We said, I mean, Demo's the highest. Half second, not even like that far behind, followed by Destro. Once again, look at the Sims. Demonology is here. I think Demonology is 1.43 now. Might be a little lower. I don't know. Second highest here, Affliction, 1.375. Destro is here, technically the lowest of all three. But once again, Sikron, most of the parses here are Destro. Uh, Princess, most of these here, once again, uh, sorry, this is Heroic Mythic, once again, are Destro, right? A lot of that is mobility based. Um, and so this is a great example again of why damage profiles matter, why class mobility matters, uh, and why honestly I think Warlock, Demo, and even like AF needs a bit more, needs a bit more mobility. Uh, we've drawn, I mean, like as far as Destro is concerned, I'll, I wasn't going to do this while hopping the game here. Um, so like as far as Destro is concerned, there's a weird amount, I mean, there's a weird amount of mobility, right? This is Diabolus Destro, right? I'm playing single target. If I'm going to hop into combat here, boss is being pulled. I'm going to precast my soul fire. Let's go full screen here. I'm going to precast my soul fire. This is my opener, right? Soul fire, infernal, shadow burn, conflict rate, doing 360s, shadow burn, conflict rate, 360s, hitting my trinket. I'll cast a chaos bolt here in his target. Why not? Couple incinerates, one, two. Hopping a 360, doing a 720, conflict rate, shadow burn, launch a chaos bolt. Uh, you know, why not here? I want my emulate didn't apply with that soul fire. That's weird. It's okay. Couple incinerates here. Uh, launch a bolt. Shadow burn. Conflict rate, doing 360s, instant cast soul fire. Couple chaos bolts here. There's so much mobility, like compared to Demo and Aff. And, and that's not even like saying we're like, we're not, we're not mage mobile. We're not evoker mobile. We're not, I don't think we're shaman level mobile. We're, we're not BM hunter mobile at all. But like that mobility goes a really, really long way when it comes to progression fights and just rating in general. This tier is exceptionally mobile. It requires a lot of mobility, even compared to previous tiers, right? Let me try and hop out of combat here. Um, I will look at Affliction here as well, then talk about Demonology. Uh, I was gonna I was gonna put this video with a whole talent breakdown and like feedback on those two, but it's gonna run too long. Gotta do two videos, unfortunately. Like, so keep in mind how Destro looked there. Obviously, I'm not doing backflips on stuff in raid combat, but the mobility is just insane. You can pre-plan movement with shadow burns with conflict rates and work around that to where you're not really losing a whole lot of, just not much downtime. And right. when it comes to Affliction Warlock's single target opener, if you're playing like Soul Harvester with Drain Soul and stuff, keep in mind how Destro just looked. Soul Harvester is a bit more stationary. Uh, it's not, but it's not like full on demo level of stationary, which we'll get to in a minute here. But like the opener, precast a haunt into a UA. We're going to agony. We're going to corruption. We're going to use this one nightfall proc here for shadows embrace stacks. Two, three, four. Uh, singularity, soul rot, all dark glare and begin rapturing. I got two procs there. So we're going to rapture, 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 rapture. Dump a nightfall stack here. Can't really move her up that uh, rapture. Rapture, got a refresh haunt here. We're gonna rapture again. We're gonna dump this nightfall stack and a drain. Hope for a proc. We got one. There we go. We're gonna rapture. We're gonna rapture. Uh, you'll, you'll cast trinket at somewhere at this point, right? If you can like, if you want to like cast your trinket somewhere where you have haunt and shadows and brace up for those damage modifiers and stuff. But like, you don't want to lose out on rapture casting your opener if you have Sora and PS up. So it's much more stationary than Destro. I'm not doing 720s backflipping, looking at all this crazy stuff going on. But like, um. 
there is still some elements elements of mobility with app. You can obviously refresh agonies in the move. Uh, if you get like random TC procs, like for example, fish for one here, you can sort of say, all right, cool. I'll try and put up my UA again. If you have like TC procs at a certain point, like here, you can, all right, cool. I have to move, but I can rapture once or twice in the move here. No big deal. You can catch a trinket in the move currently, which might be a bug, but there's ways to like work around movement in a sense it's app. It still feels pretty mobile or pretty immobile with like nightfall, shadow burn, or with Nightfall, uh, Drain Soul dumping being required. You don't want to, like, you know, fidget and interrupt the Nightfall cast but Drain Soul if you can't avoid it early on. But it's not like it's, you know, uh, total cement shoes. But that lack of mobility has hurt in a lot of spots. Now, when you're looking at Demonology's damage profile, like we talked about, Demonology is the highest simming Warlock spec. It's simmed the highest for, I think, a few, like a month and a half now, give or take. But it sees the least amount of play in single target fights. It sees very little play in the raid. They even buffed it recently. They, they buffed Grimoire Felguard. Still not playing it. Uh, they buffed Felguard. Demonic Strength is so subpar right now, we're not even hitting it in single target. They've taken it out of the APL. It's just not even being hit in single target anymore. You'll hit it in AoE. You don't even hit it in single target. You pass through it to get Wicked Maw. That's better. Um, so the main problem, well, there's a handful of problems with Demonology uh, when it comes to like damage profiles. Consistency is a very, very big one. That is a consistency is a very important word when it comes to rating damage profiles, all that. Consistency and demonology, they don't mix. They are the polar opposite, unfortunately, in Woolworth. And it makes for, that's one of the reasons as to why demonology is not seeing as much play. It might sim the highest in single target, but in actuality, there's a lot of RNG and things. Uh, we talked about, and we talked about it a bunch before, demonic core economy. Uh, I think core economy was too high in Dragonfly. I do agree with them to a certain extent. Um, in like, I don't know, first tier, second tier, when you were just casting permanent demon bolts, right? But I think they drew too far back on it. I think um, Dreadstalkers not being a 100% chance to give two demonic cores when they expire is very unfortunate for the spec. Uh, it means less mobility, less demonic cores to cast in the move. You're very immobile in your, in, in your opener and tyrant setups, which tyrant's a minute cooldown now, which I think is fine, but the tyrant setup paired with the lack of demonic cores from Dreadstalkers giving you guaranteed cores leads to a very large amount of RNG inconsistency during cooldowns, which is a very, very, very big no-no. You want your cooldowns to be consistent. You want to have, you want to have the ability to say, I want this person's rate lead to cool down right here and have the same amount of damage every pull. Not some pulls I have three demonic cores I can get a 15 imp tyrant in. At times I have no cores and I get five imps. You, that is not good rotational gameplay. Uh, there needs to be consistency, not, you know, there needs to be more consistency, uh, especially during cooldowns and such, right? Uh, and having those dogs give demonic cores back led to that. I believe they nerfed them from 100 to 30. I think they're 50 now. They buffed them back to 50, but you can still definitely feel the lack of demonic cores uh, when it comes to tyrants. Now, you can hold your power siphons for every demonic core or every tyrant, but that's not really the best kind of gameplay. Uh, I'm going to try and show you here how it looks at times with demonic cores and at times without, it's all RNG, but we've all been there. And we've gotten no demonic cores back off our Dreadstalkers going into a Tyrant setup and you have a five imp Tyrant with a Vile Fiend and a couple dogs in it, right? Uh, on top of the fact, on top of all that, so you have Tyrant Ramp being very long, which we'll look at in a minute here, a lot of hard cast in Dreadstalkers hard cast, uh, Vile Fiend or, you know, this thing hard cast, uh, Tyrant itself hard cast, Hand of Gul'dan hard cast, and also just, I mean, if you're, if you're hitting Shadow Bolt, you know, of course, those are all hard cast. Tyrant setup is very finicky, very precise. Any mechanic goes on you, 07, it's over. You scuffed it, can't do anything about it really. Um, the fact that Vile Fiend and Gloomhound Charhound, basically this, is a half minute cooldown versus Tyrant being a minute makes it incredibly tight to cast your Vile Fiend or this thing, basically, your dog, on cooldown between Tyrant. If you forget to cast this thing for five, 10 seconds, you have to hold it to line up with Tyrant again. You can't just say, all right, well, I'll hit it now. You have to watch the timer to an exact T. There is very, very, very little room, real, realistically no room or leeway for error there. It's very meticulous, right? Um, I think Tyrant being in the cooldown is nice. Uh, I wouldn't mind this being like 25 for a bit of leeway. It really wouldn't make a difference. You'd still hold it. Like if this was 25, you'd still go like Tyrant with Vile Fiend and you know, Vile Fiend on its own. Then Tyrant or Vile Fiend, Vile Fiend, on, Vile Fiend on its own. But it would give it enough leeway where, okay, you know, I didn't cast it at the, at the, at like the exact moment. Cast it now, it's fine. It's okay. But being 30 in a minute is really, really tough to get that, you know, 
optimize the round if you forget to hit it every once in a while in the middle of combat. So we're going to look at the opener here and talk talk through all the stuff here. We're going to precast Power Siphon in our opener. We got TMs out. We're going to cast two Shadow Bolts, Shadow Bolt, Shadow Bolt. Going to cast Gloomhound. There it is. Going to cast a Shadow Bolt. Going to cast Dread Stalkers here. Going to Demon Bolt, uh, Hand of Gul'dan. Demon Bolt, watching timers here, Hand of Gul'dan, one final Hand of Gul'dan, and then Summon Demonic Tyrant. Now, in your opener, it's not like as clunky in a sense because you have, you know, those two cores from your Power Siphon. You can cast your dogs on cooldown here. Watching my, you know, Gloomhound meticulously to cast it on cooldown as well in second tier. Uh, I can Siphon here as well. But the problem is like at times when you're Dreadstalkers and Tyrant setups don't give Demonic Cores because Demonic Cores give you two Soul Shards instant cast demon bolt versus shadow bolt having a cast time and giving you one that stretches out tyrant sequencing makes it a lot tougher to get more imps in your tyrant if you don't get any diatlas demons do help a little bit but they're also rng based with current rituals being a thing and even at times like it's just sort of rng based on how they spawn right so let's say for example i want a tyrant here uh, i'm going to ramp into it uh, so i have you know i'm, I'm going to cast these dogs here uh might be a little delayed no big deal but either way it's fine so i have purple dog coming up now i know that you know in about 10 seconds second tyrant here i'm gonna siphon so like you can pre-siphon those dogs right there perfect example they gave zero demonic cores i got two from imp spiring there but they gave zero demonic cores i was saved by this calling proc and i was saved by the imps giving demonic cores right there but if those imps hadn't given cores and they expired i hadn't gotten that calling proc this 14 imp tyrant is a 6-5 imp tyrant or whatever. At times, you'll get no cores from your dog expiring. At times, your imps won't give any cores. At times, you won't get a demonic calling proc, you know? So if I had to hard cast those dogs there, like hard cast these dogs into a tyrant like this, and then cast three shadow bolts there, that would have been half the imps. And it would have been much tighter in casting tyrant because you have to plan for this cast. You have to plan for Gloomhound's cast. You got to plan for a shadow bolt. You got to plan for a Dreadstalker's cast. You got to plan for a demon bolt into a hand of Gul'dan, into a demon bolt into a hand of Gul'dan, into a Demon Bolt, into a hand of Gul'dan. And then right here, you got to cast Tyrant too, but pets haven't three seconds left on them. Roughly, roughly give or take three seconds on them. And it's a second and a half cast on Tyrant, right? There's a lot of like, like planning every Tyrant ramp. And this happens every single minute. So if you have to move for a mechanic or whatever, you got a short change Tyrant, it makes things really awkward. And this is a great example as to why Destro and Aph are much mobile, their damage profile is much better because they don't have to deal with this this 15 20 second tyrant ramp every every minute right i think tyrant being a minute cooldown is really nice uh, i think ways to fix this you just make this like oh, half a half second cast minute uh, like 0.75 seconds whatever uh i think it'd be great to have dogs be instant permanently might be a bit of a reach just take master summoner and put this for callings at i don't know something like that who cares at this point um but in general tyrant ramp with biofiend mixed in it felt this way in uh dragonflight which is why you don't even play biofiend either a couple reasons why but it felt exceptionally clunky with how how many hard cash you had but the lack of demonic cores at times further exacerbates that issue and makes it so I got to cast a handful of Shadow Bolts in between my Vialfiend cast and my Dreadstalkers cast and my Hand and Gul'dan cast while, while all planning for my Tyrant cast. So the Tyrant the tyrant ramp time being longer, uh, Core Economy being nerfed, uh, Dog being a, a tight timer versus, you know, Tyrant being a minute versus half a minute, all that combined has made Demonology, it's the highest simming spec, but it's not the highest performing. Um, for a handful of reasons. I think these will all be addressed. I think it's not going to happen 11.0.5. We can keep buffing it. And eventually, if it's buffed enough, it'll be like the best spec just because it hits so hard. But the gameplay feels a bit off. Uh, it'll likely be like a, a patch 11.1 that corrects it because it takes some fundamental talent changes. I think it's probably too late for, for 11.05. But either way, um, people are wondering a lot why Death Ramp are seeing a lot more play. And why is Demo Simming the highest one seeing any play, even in Patrick Bosses? Looking at these three specs here, there's your reasons why. So thanks for watching, guys. It wraps it up. Hopefully the video wasn't too long. Uh, like I said, I wanted to make a video with like feedback in it and talking about damage profiles and all that. Um, but the actual like, raw talent feedback video, it's probably too late for 11.0.5 for that. But I still want to make it in a few days. Just this video would have been an hour long. And I don't want to do that to y'all. I don't want to do it to myself. So uh, this video breaking down like talent builds or uh, damage profiles, all that and a feedback video in a few days if you guys have questions about that kind of stuff for destro app and demo hopefully this helped clarify a little bit as to why they're performing the way they are what maybe should change and uh just yeah how damage profiles work comparatively to sims and 
well, all that. Uh, if you guys want any Week of Wars add-ons, uh, links to Twitch, Discord, my website uh, down below as well. I think it's well up, up here. If you guys want them, I'll offer free for you guys. And like always, a massive shout out to my patrons for all support on Patreon. Like every time. Thank you all so much for all support. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. It allows me to keep doing what I'm doing for y'all, making content. And for all that, yeah, I forever uh, in your debt. Thank you. <laughs> uh, if you look at supporting the page, friends, should be linked up here as well as down below uh, in the video description as well. Uh, like I said, I believe 11.05 is coming out in like two weeks. It's probably too late for major changes to come to Warlock stuff, but 11.1. I will probably be on PTR within a couple months. It might even be like a month and a half. I mean, we're already mid October and with a very like no inside information, I'm guessing the next raids in February, probably somewhere on there, maybe, maybe early March, mid February. That means PTR is coming probably by December, somewhere in December. Cause we got the holidays coming up. We got new year. So, uh, those changes, feedback and stuff, we're going to get it rolling out sooner or later. So if you want to see that or just in general, I uh, want to come back and hang out for some more content, hit the like and sub button below. Helps out a ton. And I'll catch you all again soon on stream. Peace.